Yo guys, so I'm waiting on you guys. Hi L. Yeah, so it's question and answer time. Yay! Hi sweetheart. So we decided alright, I was thinking about like um Elvis, we're not speaking about you, so we can't be boring. Um I was thinking tomorrow, but everybody seemed to be waiting for something. So you can ask questions and we can chit chat a little bit before bed, right? For those of us who still up and can't sleep. Elvis, go to your bed if you're bored. Good. Hi Romaine. Hi Claudine. Hi Danette. Kerry. Seanette. Hi Lensford. How are you doing? Thank you so much. Hi Omar. Welcome. Wait, how so many of you guys up so late? I didn't know I had so many night owls up. <laughs> Claudine, this is my usual time, sweetheart. I am rarely asleep at this hour. Hi, Craig. Nice to see you. Elvis, go and have fun and leave me with my boring self. Let me talk to my people. All right, guys. So, I mean, we, we, we're going to talk. All right, Anthony, let's talk about what it is that. Hi, Mon Mon. Desiree, girl, you still up? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we said we're going to chat a little bit before bed. So, um, all right. So we keep each other company a little bit, and then we see where we go from there. So, Anthony, what you want us to talk about? What else? <laughs> Hi, Deidre. Hi, Bobby. Yeah, all of you are late, bug. Oh, really, Omar? That's awesome. You're still on a tour. I went on a mini road trip today, and it was just super awesome. I had no idea I was missing out on all of that because I am just so usually in my routine. And then I went on a little road trip today, and it was just awesome. Yeah, I got to see so many places that I didn't get a chance to see for a while. Hi, Denise. How are you doing? Jenny, hi. All right, Romain. Romain, your question is, why is it that when people wish you good and when you start to make progress, they start to bad mind the thing? All right, let me tell you something about people. We are all about achieving, but what I, I don't want to make it a, a, a race thing, but a lot of people say if you realize it, block people. Although this exists right across the board, if you realize it block people, it's as if once you start to make progress, the, this, this instinct of envy comes in. And then it's as if you want what the other person has. And you don't think that there is a chance there for everybody to make it. You just feel like you want what that person has. And it is just so unfair because nobody knows really the struggle you have to go through to, you know, step up your game and start to show some progress. And um, people will be fake because in all honesty, even when it comes on to my blog, um, there were quite a few people encouraging me. And, you know, when, when it started, you think they would be the ones to really jump up and, you know, say, yeah, go. You'll find out that it is the people who really were in the sideline right in the background the strangers those are the ones who will hold you up so tell you what you don't care you don't watch what other people want to see or want to do those who push you but they, they probably pushed you thinking that you would not have made it you understand and then guess what you prove them wrong and by proving them wrong they have no chance but to envy you because they thought you would have failed so this is what you're going to do keep on pushing and continue to shock them continue to let them stay there and envy if they don't want to step up the game and and do something for themselves then you don't care about that sometimes you just have to do you look out for yourself because at the end of the day the real people who really have your back they will support your thing all right yes lensford that's what i was saying that i wouldn't make it a race thing but i mean there are so many people who actually say you know they realize that it is really prevalent amongst black people and it's true it's really true 
But Claudine, don't let that stop you. Whatever it is you work to achieve, that is your effort. That is on you. And the few people who support you, friends and the true family members. Because you know you have some people who will only pretend. But let me tell you what. It is when you're in that moment of um, weakness or when you think that is your hardest test ever. It is the people who you see come around you. Those are the people you treasure. Not when things are going easy and not when things are smooth sailing and the people who sit around and try to enjoy whatever it is that you have achieved. It is those people who knew you when you had nothing. Right? You think so, Anthony? You think white people will style for you faster? Because in all honesty, you know, um, even when you look at our mentality, and let me just say that again, um, it's not just for black people, but we see it a lot. That's what I'm saying. Because even when you look at how we support each other, black people tend to walk into another establishment and we support other people, but our own black people who own businesses and so forth, we are the last people to go in there. So that's just what I'm saying. It's just not something that is always amongst black people, but I'm telling you that it's very prevalent. Yes, Amara, and you're going to prove that almost every day. It's not just today. You're going to prove it tomorrow again and then probably another day after that. Yep. It's going to happen every day. So it really doesn't matter whatever the issue is. Um, just keep on doing you. Focus on your goals and whatever it is that you have to achieve. That's true, Fitz. Post-slavery effect and it's not going to die. Not with the mentality that society has instilled in us. We have to break free. And Bob Marley, had a, he had a point when he said mental slavery. Because we are so limited and within our, you know, our own minds that if we can't do it this way, we don't try to find out that um, there are different roads to achieving the same result. We always tend to follow one thing. Yeah, for real. Me just hate him. That just doesn't make any sense. Um, if somebody's gonna hate you, at least give me a reason. I always try to ask people for clarity. And maybe that is why some people think I I dig too deep because I don't like surface answers. If you ask me something or I ask you something, I need something with depth to hold me because my brain is not shallow. Right? And if you're going to give me something to hold on to, I know what you're trying to do. I like to ask questions and I like to get clarity. That's true, Fitzroy. We don't like reading. And it's getting worse because even in the classroom, we realize that technology has its good and its bad. And nowadays I realize kids don't like to read. Everything has to be animated. Everything has to be graphically presented. Everything has to be brightly colored. What about good old words that feed your mind and feed your intellect? And um, that's why I said technology is good, but it's also bad because it's really taken away from that really, really, um, it is necessary to read. Hi, Latoya. Hi, Jason. How have you been, honey? It's been a long time. I hope you're okay. Yeah, it's true. Thanks, Alexia, so much, sweetheart. I, I appreciate the support from you guys. Trust me. Um, I never had the nerve to do this before, but you guys have been really encouraging, and um, I'm really taking it up. I think this is just one thing that I realized that probably this is the Lord. You know, this is one thing that He has blessed me with the ability to reach people and to, you know, do my own little bit of motivation. Because God knows we need it. Hi, my cousin Dean. How you doing? Joe, what you still doing up? <laughs> I thought you'd be on the road. Or you're on the road and you're just tuning in a little bit. Alright, so, JJ, you asked me to do something about um, Tyrone Wait, no man. <laughs> um, Claudine, no. You can't say that. And we always say that we um we don't need people. But human beings, we need each other. Right? Um, as much as people try to say people have better relationship with animals, no. Hi Anthony, thanks for joining in. Um as human beings 
sorry about that guys yeah we need we need friends um the thing is claudine um what you need to do is to just probably listen to your instincts i spoke about that on my blog if you were there um sometimes people are around us and yes they pretend very well but tell you what you do you trust the actions don't listen to the words you trust the actions because most times the words and the actions don't match consistency is not there and if there is no consistency then you know then um something is wrong so hi Leighton, cousin ray hi how are you raquel hi junior hi guys good night thanks for joining in oh my god sherwin hi sweetie i miss you <laughs> i miss you at work Kerwin. of course i miss you Taron, I don't know how to deal with your Builderman project, no. But I do understand your concern. As a as a female, um, and I, I don't want to get into that tonight because I think that's a whole other topic by itself. Because if we get into that, it's going to take over all the other things that probably other people would want to talk about. Um, the Builderman project, no. Here, Taron's concern, and I'm throwing it out to you guys. Um, Tyrone's concern is that women, we tend to pick up men and we end up um, have to take care of them financially or mind them according to what Tyrone said. And he has a point. Um, the thing is, I don't think it's the ambition for every woman to do that. Sometimes these are some isolated cases where, you know, it happens. And sometimes it's late when the woman realizes that she has been, you know, tricked into doing it or so. But I don't think it is the direct ambition of any good woman to financially take care of a man. But, um, like I said, Taron, I will address that in another live. I think it is a very interesting topic for real. And I know the ladies will roll out on this one. Hi, Kina, little sis. Denise, hi, how are you? Um, we're just up chatting a little bit like the late people who don't have no bed to sleep in. So we're just playing around. Hi, Judith. Yes. Thank you, Tyrone. <laughs> May I go do my research and come back for that one day. <laughs> okay. Um, I know we spoke about... Um, Nella, you spoke about moving on. Hi, Nella. Asuka. Hi, guys. You spoke about um how to move on from toxic relationship. Well, the relationship uh it can be can it be a relationship with a man or can it be a friend? Because in any case, they can be toxic. Um, first of all, you have to um be able to identify what is toxic, and we know the word within its you know with its vocabulary what it means. But once you find out that the relationship is not going anywhere, you find out you have to be the one who is doing all the compromise. You find out that you are the one doing most of the talking because everything seems to just be bothering you. Hi, Moat. Um, you find out that even, and I spoke surprisingly on my blog about people and energy. Kenny, hi, sweetheart. Um, when you find out that the energy has dropped or you find out that there's so much negative energy, it's time to move on. What you do now is do not tell yourself that. Don't give yourself a time limit because it very rarely works. The time limit just does not work. So what you do is trust yourself to do the right thing in terms of what you're going to do now is to distract yourself. Right? So most times when you fall into a toxic relationship, it is where you have lost track of yourself and you have lost track of the things that no 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 you need to stop the contact if it's not a case of he doesn't want to stop contacting you you block delete and everything and he still contacts you hmm but how is that hi Dane hi Diana unless he knows where you live but apart from that, what you need to do is you need to move on in terms of 
go back to doing the things that you like to do go back to doing your hobbies the things that interest you rediscover yourself go out with your friends you know to your favorite places and just revisit all the things that you put down to facilitate him and pick those up and move on it's true bobby it seems like it is really a stalker because she said um gavin hi sweetheart we're talking about anything anything at all you wanna talk about um and i'm really concerned what jayla say um for real um this it sounds like a stalker for real carida hi hi shelby yes girl we're just chit chatting us you know we're up and we're just chatting keeping each other's company just pushing you know little topics out there and touch each and every little thing hi nadine how are things <laughs> akina yes get your bigger booty on a more serious note just refocus and rebuild yes refocus and rebuild because you see what toxic means you know is that you have taken on so much negativity that is starting to poison your personality, your energy. Hi, Sharifa. Your energy has now been um, sucked and you have absorbed everything that is negative from around you. So what you need to do is take yourself out of the situation and just reinvent yourself. You see, oftentimes we get so caught up sometimes in our relationships and our friendships that we're so desperate for them to work. Um, because of this desperation for it to work, we lose sight of the fact that our happiness just does not depend on the other person. Our happiness depends on us. And we put that aside so that we could cater and be the best friend or be the best girlfriend or best boyfriend for that person. And in so we lose our identities, we lose ourselves. And then that is how we end up feeling empty. That is how we end up feeling as if we can't go on and that is why we feel so tired and sapped of energy when it is time for us to move on because we have left everything that belongs to us, ourselves, aside. So the best thing you need to do, apart from the fact that if you don't have a stalker, go back and just revisit who you were. So you had a hobby and you stopped doing it. You need to go back and start getting yourself involved in what you want to do. Go out with your friends and just go have some fun. Dance, drink don't get drunk though just drink and have fun actually go on road trips with your friends right do stuff like that to just get you distracted and just rebuild <laughs> claudine no me not go no 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 i am not going to encourage violence in any form or matter but seriously if he is a stalker then you probably have to think about um how to do this or if you can do that or let somebody know Just don't be negative. Just do the necessary thing. Take the necessary precautions. Make sure that you let people know where you are. Like if you're with your close friends and family members. If you're out, let them know where you are. Let them know who you are out with. Because, you know, times are so serious. And in our reality, our lives we live are not really respecting our lives anymore. And so we just have to take that step. And I'm not trying to say it. I'm just trying to be very specific. Come on, Bobby, get real. You're not going to short change your skills if you're that good, all right? So whether or not the sex is good, I am sure the stalkers will come up because guess what? There are some men, you know, they will be all caught up with the sex. But guess what? It is something more about the woman that actually keeps them out. So bottom line is, yes, it may be the physical or the sexual attraction, but there must be a good quality else about the woman that you know that oh my god I am going to miss this or somebody else will be privy to her seeing her in this state and it will drive you insane as a man so it's not just about the sex uh well Penny I saw his hair um I've seen what people comment they have said for me his hair was um okay but guess what I am not going to be petty. I am just trying to search. Um, I'm just going to say every school or each school has its rules. And 
I'm sure you would have known the expectation because in that match on the day of the graduation, boys had to, boys had to, um, oh, sorry, you're not hearing me. I hope it's better now. Um, boys had to hurry up and go down and get their hair cut properly, right? Because school rules are school rules. They expect your hair to look a certain way before you are accepted into the school or you graduate. Now, the difference is with his hair texture. Um, you're not hearing me, guys? No sound? Maybe I'm going to have to get my headphones, right? All right, let me get my earphones and see if it makes a difference. Hang on. Hold up. Oh, you're hearing me now. So, all right. Let me see if I push my earphones. All right, you guys hear me clearly now? All right, great. Right, Kenny, so school rules are school rules. And um, regardless of who you are, you should try to just, ask, you know, deal with it. Okay, no earphones is good now? Okay, good. All right, good. All right, Claudine, um... That's a very sensitive topic, the one about um, your orientation. I think that boils down to the individual's family members. I can't say how they should react, right? Because um, each family is different. And I mean, everybody wants to know that their siblings, their family members, their sisters, brothers, whoever it is, are, are straight. Hi, Cody. Um, however, we know that with society, some families are still not able to grasp the fact that, yes, it is now more prevalent. It's out there. But like I said, to each his own, I can't really comment on that. Um, each family member will have to know how to deal with it. If it is very hard to deal with, just don't be hard on that family member because... Remember, some people are coming from traditional and very, you know, religious and so backgrounds and, and you have to give them time to kind of wrap their brain around it. For some, it will be easier because they're more dynamic and they're more, you know, um, they will accept society and what it has become. You know, but for some, it will be harder. Uh, hi, Nikisha. Yes, Akina, for real. Um, and if, if we don't get the support from the parents, that is what is creating the issue. You can't have teachers saying something and then parents are still in, in students or in their children that, you know, it is okay. So why should they be having problems with it? Um, what people need to do is, is to understand that regardless of school rules, you have to think about the fact that schools are practically preparing um, students because we don't groom them just um academically we kind of get them rounded hi andre we round them so that they can function holistically in society so if they can't conform to school rules how will they conform to rules that are set in the workplace and that's what they need to understand workplace also have um also has the school um rules to abide by hi tana how you doing andre hi guys thanks for joining in Hi, and we're just vibing a little bit, chit-chatted a little bit, right? Uh, Claudine, um, I am not sure what to say. Like I said, you just have to um, deal with it accordingly as it comes, right? Homosexuality is something that you can't just shove down somebody's throat, and at the same time, you have to be a little bit accepting because of how society is now and it is now becoming okay for everybody to feel comfortable you know with his or her sexuality so like i said to you families will have to deal that on an individual basis how are you doing sweetheart i'm fine hi colleen and hi simone thanks for joining in nero hi 
Now, Gavin Peart, where did you go? What were you talking about again? Yeah, I am up. I sent my daughter away today. I'm a miss her, so I just decided that I was going to come open up my live feed and see what it's like. And it's actually good. I'm enjoying it. Um, you guys are quite fun to talk to. It's true, Natish. We have an, a, a rule issue. Everywhere we go, we try to we try to go against whatever it is. We have a problem with complying for real, honestly. And I'm not going to hide that. Adults just the same. Just to join a queue, it can become so chaotic. That's true. Any other questions, guys? <laughs> Anthony, that is just your opinion, right? Um we do, that is a very sensitive issue as i said and each person will have to deal with it accordingly hi cuz sherry's hi Jermaine. thanks for joining we're just j vibing a little bit before we go to bed anthony yeah overall i know jamaicans we're very very um ticklish about that <laughs> No, I, I, whoever said rules are meant to be broken, I'm not quite sure who said that. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, First Lady J. Unless it gets you fired, are you serious? No. Don't you have a conscience? Where are your morals, my, my, my good sir? So you're saying unless you're, you're not caught, you can just do anything you want to do? No. You must learn to comply even if you're not being watched over. And again, that is um, it's a little slavery mentality thing. You know, we have this thing about us that we don't function unless somebody is standing over us and telling us do this, do that. And then we turn around and we complain. Akina, um, you know what? I asked a very pertinent question. Um... And guess what? Uh, I was met with so many different. But here, I think um, men like complications. They may claim that they don't. But nice women, if you realize when you are so laid back and you're so accepting and so forth, you get taken advantage of. To me, I think men have this innate thing. It is inbuilt of them to like complications they say it keeps them on their toes and guess what men do come with a lot of baggage because believe it or not they're very emotional people and the difference with men and women is that they internalize where we find the outlet and we will cry and we will vent and we will cuss and carry on men will internalize hi gangster how you doing um Okay, Gavin, now I get your point. I'll talk with that. Um, I'll speak on that in a little while. Yes, Akina, men are indeed very, very um, emotional, but they try to hide it, you know, because it's not very manly and it's not very masculine to show emotion. But they do come with a lot of baggage, and it is often their baggage that creates so much, you know, it creates a little bit of stagnation in the relationship and oftentimes they try to do this little transfer of frustration to make it seem as if you are the problem but um i will tell you what i've heard from very valuable sources they claim that they like women with a little complication because it keeps them on their toes that's what i heard and i do agree to an extent it's only when they cannot um Manage no, they will call it nagging, right? 
<laughs> so you see, Anthony is indeed agreeing that yes, men do like a little complication. It keeps things interesting and you know, it keeps them occupied. It gives them something to think about and wonder and try to win over the woman. It's like a challenge and they continuously love a challenge. And and, and they say a woman who is too compliant and too soft and nice, it, it you know, pose no real challenge to them. Um, Jayla, if that is, um, all right, let me talk to Gavin first. Um, Gavin, trust me, that is a sore point for all of us. Um, the Chinese are really taking over Jamaica. If they are everywhere, trust me, it's not just Jamaica. If you should travel the Caribbean or you go in certain other places like in America or so, you realize they have infiltrated everywhere. And yes. Um, they control major, they are major stakeholders here in Jamaica and being employers to our people and you know how that goes, right? So yes, while it is a sore point, we really don't have that much power as a people that lies on our government's shoulder and uh, it's really should be something that you know and i think just like how we have our schools going and we think that our students are in fact our students are major major stakeholders i think the people the inhabitants the natives of a country should be the major stakeholders who have the most say but on the contrary we hardly have a voice here in jamaica and that is just too sad Anthony, please be quiet. You are so emotional. I mean, come on. I have seen tough men who claim they don't, whatever, they, they cry. So you have the ability to cry. You have emotions. You just don't want to admit it. Hi, Jojo. <laughs> Jella, um, I know it seems like a waste of time, especially here with no jobs. You waste. It just feels like a big waste of time. And, um... I am going to have to deal with that issue too because my daughter soon gone to university and I'm here wondering what is it that she's going to do when she actually leaves. Oh God, I mean, it, it, it is just something.